Hello. My name is Lauren, and I would like to ask you all for your permission for me to share my story with you today. I want to be relaxed and real with you, and I want to allow you to understand me. These are some of my life experiences, and even though they do not completely define me, they are a source of who I am. The first time I ran away from home, I was five years old. I was wearing my purple corduroy Pooh Bear overalls in the pouring rain and cold as I walked through a Christmas tree farm. I remember a voice inside me telling me I had to leave now or something bad was going to happen. I'm not sure what that was, but it was the first time I felt like I should listen to myself. I made it two miles when the police found me. That was when I entered into my first foster placement. By the time I was six years old, I had been in 12 different homes. I returned to my mother at the age of six, and life settled down for a while. I stayed with my mother until I was 14 years old when things started getting really painful again. I ran away a lot and stayed at the local youth shelter for months at a time, and was then entered back into foster care. For almost seven years, I hadn't lived anywhere longer than eight months. My life was all about constant moving. I was placed in many foster homes, respite homes, more shelters, and a group home. I didn't feel comfortable being in one place for long. I went to six different high schools by the end of it all. What instability felt like for me, I'm sure is what felt like stability for many. I got really good at noticing my internal timer. I would really just try to last until the next change that really usually required a disaster, a move, and then a court date. I did not see the adults in foster care as family. Most were not supportive or caring. I was a paycheck, a goal, a job, or paperwork for them to complete. I was there to make them look good. Some of them made me call them mother or worship their God, and I had to eat their food, dress the way they wanted, and go where they wanted me to go. I never felt like I was enough the way that I was. I was threatened, abused, and manipulated much worse than I had ever received back at home. There was one respite home I stayed in with an elderly woman. I don't remember her name, but I will call her Jules. For a couple days I was there, Jules was so kind to me. In the morning, she put sugars on strawberries for breakfast. I think about Jules often and how calm and confident she was. She was kind without expectation. I wish I could have stayed there forever. When I turned 18, I entered into an abusive relationship that lasted a few years, and that in itself was a long and tiresome battle for me. By the time I turned 21, I had lived in over 50 placements in my life. I was exhausted from all the changes and bad choices I had made and that others had made for me. I was sleeping on the floor in a friend's trailer when I found Volunteers of America's transitional housing program for former foster youth. I was finally ready to take control of my life. That voice inside me spoke again, saying that this was my way out of homelessness. I walked to meet with the housing coordinator and to start on paperwork. At Volunteers of America, I met Dr. Tucker, who works with Emancipated Foster Youth. He helps us deal with our ordeals. I have known Dr. Tucker for almost two years, and he inspires me because we come from similar backgrounds. He is the very first successful adult I've met who is a former foster child. I've always had ambition and hope to become something great, but never really had any good examples until I saw how he has done it. I would not be in the positive state I am in now if it were not for Dr. Tucker and Volunteers of America. The 24 months I've stayed at Volunteers of America is the longest I've been in one place for years. And here I feel like I am not alone. Being here has finally given me a chance to concentrate on what I want for myself, my world, and my future. I can't begin to tell you how much it helps me to know that there are people who will support me no matter what happens people who are interested and engaged in my life. At Volunteers of America, I am more than just paperwork, and I finally feel safe. To all foster friends out there, I have some advice that 14-year-old me could have really used. It will all be over soon. As soon as you can accept that you are in charge of your own life, a whole world will open up for you. Just keep trying, just keep going, and do the little things like get out of bed, feed yourself, and maybe express yourself. 
Enjoy the little moments of freedom before you become an adult. Cherish whatever friends you have a chance to make along the way. Do not let the bitterness and the past overcome you. And please, do not become a victim of your circumstances. Learn from your experience and realize that how beautiful it is that it is yours. It is pain and it is unique, and at the end of the day, you are so much stronger and wiser and resilient. I know things could never be worse, and I know everything is manageable to a certain point. Be happy and proud of your independence. Don't lose hope in the world because there are people and places, like Volunteers of America, that will help you rebuild your life. Soon, I will be transferring to Humboldt University to get my bachelor's degree in international studies and global culture. <laughs> After I graduate, I will work with people from different backgrounds and cultures to unify communities so that they can find peace. It makes me happy to help other people feel important and wanted because I understand exactly how one person can make a difference in our lives. There's so much beauty in the world, but sometimes we just need help noticing it. The beauty makes the journey all worthwhile. Thank you all for your valuable time today, and thank you all for supporting Volunteers of America. And if you ever wonder if your support makes a difference, I'm here to tell you that it does.